All right, so we're on the inside now, and I'm going to give you, as I promised you in the last video, the seven ways that I buy property and make lots of money. Matter of fact, I don't always buy the property. Sometimes I just control it. Sounds pretty good, right? We can actually control the property, never have the responsibility of owning it, and still make money. I like that part. Okay. So the first deal we're going to talk about is what I call a slot deal. It's an acronym that stands for sandwich lease option transaction. So that's sandwich lease option transaction, S L O T. When we first started doing this, it was kind of a joke because we would put $10 into the slot machine, pull the lever and out would come $10,000, uh, which is really how the deal works. Let me explain. So if you have a buyer that has no equity and can't sell their house because they have to bring money to the closing, you can actually give them a delayed cash out. In other words, we'll buy the house, but we'll pay them later. And here's how it works. So the seller owes $100,000 and has, say, a $1,200 a month payment. Your buyer is willing to pay $105,000 for the property because 81% of this country is not qualified for a mortgage and this person is out of that 81% pool and he's willing to pay 105,000 because he can't buy a house anywhere else. Now we're not taking advantage of him, we're actually helping him. So if he were to give us $105,000, 5,000 of that money comes to us, and I'm gonna explain how that works in a minute, and he owes 100, which would be able to buy out the owner. We're going to allow him to pay the $1,200 a month this guy has for a payment. The buyer is going to sell. The buyer is going to pay the $1,200 a month until he's qualified for a mortgage, which is usually done within two years. So the seller gets his $100,000. The buyer buys a house he normally wouldn't be able to buy. So it's a win-win situation, and we make, say, five or six or seven grand in between. The reason why we could do that and not be licensed is because we signed an option agreement with this person, which means now we have an equity share in the property. So we paid $10 or $100 for this option and we sold it to this person for $5,000. That's a slot deal. The important thing is there's zero equity in the house. The next deal, which is number two, is an actual option deal. An option works similarly it has, first of all, it's got 10%, yeah, 10% <laughs> of equity. So that means that we can buy it from the owner. Let's say it's a $100,000 house. We can sign an option agreement for $90,000 and go off and find a buyer for $100,000 or $105,000. They bring the hundred dollars or $105,000 to the closing table. It pays off the mortgage. We make 10 grand in the middle. Very easy. Again, we can do this and not have a license because when we sign the option agreement with our seller, we have an equity share in the property. Number three <clears throat> is actually a lease option deal. It's a little bit different than the slot deal, and here's the reason why. First of all, with a, with a lease option, we have 15% worth of equity. So when we sign this agreement with the seller, it's worth $100,000, we sign it for $85,000 or thereabouts. We bring it to our buyer and sell it to him for $100,000. So there's $15,000 worth of equity. Plus, if the seller has a $1,200 a month payment, we could probably rent to our buyer for say $1,500. So we make $300 a month, okay? That's why it's different than a lease option than a slot deal. The, 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 the lease option is different than a slot deal because with a slot deal, you're taking the buyer and seller, putting them together, and you're making your down payment money, and then you leave the deal, and they just keep doing business with one another. With a lease option deal, you have a lease option agreement between the seller and you is one agreement, and then you have a second agreement between you and the buyer. The first agreement's for $15,000, $1,200 a month. The second agreement's for $100,000, $1,500 a month. So you got money in between. That's why you want to stay in the deal. The only time you ever stay in a deal is when you're making money. Money now, money monthly, money later. That's how you think about deals. Am I making money now? Am I making money monthly? Am I making money later? 
every time you buy a deal, you want to make sure that you have equity the day you bought it or you, you're, you can create equity the day you bought it. Like a slot deal, you create the equity. With an option deal, you got 10% equity. With a lease option deal, you got 15% equity. And it just keeps going down the line. You always want to make sure you have equity in the deal. But always ask yourself, do I have money now, money monthly, money later? And when you get all three, you have a nice deal. Number four. Number four is what we call getting the deed or subject to. What that means is, uh, first of all, it's got 20% equity. So you want to make sure that if you buy a $200,000 house, you pay no more than one sixty, dollars Or if you buy a $100,000 house, you're paying no more than $80,000. Okay? So what happens is the owner is more interested in debt relief or getting rid of the payments and getting the pressure off of them and getting rid of the house than they are any kind of risk. That's what we call a motivated seller. So what happens is they actually deed you the house, the mortgage stays in their name. Okay, okay, I could feel it, I could feel it. You're wondering why would somebody do that? Well, here's the reason why. They're motivated, number one. Number two, it's actually very safe for them because if I, the deed's in my name, that means I'm responsible for the house, I gotta pay the taxes, I gotta pay the insurance, I gotta pay the mortgage payment. If I don't, the first thing the bank's gonna do before they foreclose is they're gonna do a title search. And they're gonna realize that the loan's in the seller's name, the, the deed is in my name. They're gonna sue both of us to get their title back in a foreclosure if I don't pay. Most of the time, I have deeper pockets than the person I'm buying from, most of the time. So I don't wanna be in that position, so I'm not gonna let that happen, number one. Number two, if it did happen, we're both protected because we're going to court together. So it's not like I stole their house or did something wrong, anything like that, okay? But it is a beautiful strategy to buy houses left, right, and center. I bought a lot of houses. The first 30, 40, 50 houses I bought was exactly like that. I went out the first year I was in business and I did these deals and they were simple to do. I did all my own paperwork. Nowadays, it's a little bit different, uh, but it, it's not hard to do. Somebody can actually deed the house to you and not worry about the underlying mortgage. Now, the, the last thing I wanna cover on the subject two deal is does it trigger a due on sale clause? Which means if the bank finds out that the title was transferred, the bank could say, I want all my money. <clears throat> That's a due on sale clause. What I do to prevent that is when they deed me the house, we actually deed it into a trust. So it looks like we are doing uh, financial planning or estate planning for the seller. And the bank never questions it. I've been doing this for 10 or 12 years. I've never had a problem. I have a lot of friends that do it. I've never heard of a due on sale clause being triggered. However, it is a thing and it can happen. The way I handle it is through trusts. And that makes, that makes the deal nice and smooth. So now we're at number five, which is rehab retail. And that, and that deal, that means we have at least 30% worth of equity, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that this deal has a little cushion in it. Now, I'm not gonna go into a lot of how to do rehab retail because all you need to do is watch A&E or one of those other TV shows that talk about it all the time and they preach it very well. They show you how it's done. I don't have to spend a lot of time doing that. I will tell you, that you don't need money. If you have a good network, uh, which I can show you how to do, you don't, I mean, when I buy my properties, uh, the most I do is I put up $1,000 to purchase the property, but a few weeks later when I close, I get the $1,000 back from my, either my private lender or my hard money lender. And I, I can't emphasize this enough. You may think that you have no idea where to get this money from, but if you have a good deal, you will find this person. I, I, have, I have seen it so many times. If you have a good deal, money will find you. And just a little bit of a hint, you could get this money out of an IRA. How many people you know with retirement money that is just sitting there? If you know how to do it, you can get it from their IRA. And they're probably family members. But moving on, the point is, is that you don't need your own money. You can get investors to invest in you and you can buy these properties, you can fix them up, and you can sell them. And you don't need to have any money. You need to have a little know-how, but you don't need money to do it. And, and it's not hard. 
once you understand it. The hardest part is getting the training. So the next deal is number six, what I call a wholesale deal. Now, a lot of you may have heard about this before. Uh, it's been around for quite a while. It has 40% worth of equity. So if you don't have at least 40% worth of equity, then you're gonna probably have, or less, you're gonna have trouble selling this deal. What a wholesale deal is, uh, you actually purchase a deal and you go sell it to a rehabber. But you need to make sure there's enough money on the table for the rehabber. And you need to make sure you use common formulas that rehabbers use. And you need to, uh, the biggest thing is, is you need to know that a rehabber with his renovation usually doesn't want to be above 70%. So uh, that includes purchasing the house and doing the renovation. He doesn't want to be more than or much more than 70% of its after renovated value. Okay. So these are a little harder to find. Uh, for a very long time, they were taught that they're the best way to make 10 grand or five grand. Uh, I can tell you in, in my world, $5,000 is a, is a common fee for a wholesaler. So if somebody brings me a deal. They tell me how much they're paying for it because I'm going to find out sooner or later. And I give them a $5,000, kind of like a finder's fee. It doesn't happen a lot because, I mean, where are you going to find people that want to sell a house that cheap? Uh, but they are available and you will find those deals. And when you do, you can make some money. I prefer you do a slot deal because there's a lot more houses that are, uh, that are, that are they're trying to sell that they, what they owe on them. You know, they're 100% leveraged. There's no equity. Uh, if you can do that then you're much better off and you can make a lot more money, okay? I mean, think of it this way. If you could find a $600,000 house and somebody owes $600,000, you could probably get, I mean, if they went to the bank to get a conventional loan on a $600,000 house, because FHA probably won't lend them 600,000, it's what we call a jumbo loan, 10% is 60 grand, 20% is 120 grand. So for that person to buy that house on a conventional mortgage, they need 120 grand. Is it possible you could make $50,000 on a slot deal? Oh yeah, we do it often. Is it possible you could make $50,000 on a lease option deal? Oh yeah. Is it possible you could make $50,000 on a, on a subject to deal? Oh yeah. Okay, which by the way, realize that the first four deals, your slot deal, your option deal, your lease option deal, and your, your uh, subject to, you probably bought for $10 or $100 down payment. And none of those houses you own. Well, the, the, the subject to deal you do, but the first three you don't own. You're, you're just controlling the property. So you have very little risk. Okay. So that's wholesale number six. Number seven is <clears throat> owner financing. Owner financing is a beautiful thing. That means there's a hundred percent worth of equity in the property. And it's just, it, it just comes down to what you and the seller agree to. The trick that I use, and it's not even a trick, but the, 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 the practice that I use with the owner financing is often I'll overpay for the house because I can do principal only payments. If you have no interest involved, the math is just phenomenal. I mean, the example I use very often is I'll buy a $240,000 house. I'll pay $260,000 for it and sell it for $260,000 because I've got principal only payments. Every single month I have a principal reduction and my tenant is paying for the principal reduction. So it makes me money every single month. A lot of money, $1,000, $1,500 a month on an average. And think about it. If you have a mortgage payment, if you, if I were to say to you, how much did you pay for your house? And you told me, oh, I paid $150,000 for it. I'm going to tease you and say, no, you didn't. If your payments were a thousand dollars a month and you have a 30 year mortgage, which is 360 payments, that means you paid $360,000 for that house. See how that works. So if we're overpaying by 20 grand, it's not a big deal because we're going to make the money up in the in in the money so we're going to make the money up in terms which means we're going to make it up in our monthly cash flow and that's not a problem in our money up front okay so remember the key is you have to have money now money monthly and money later and if you don't have all three of those it's fine you can just do money now which is like the retail rehab deals or if you're doing a lease option you could do all three you could do money now money monthly money later. Those are your three profit centers. 
when you're looking at a deal, you should always make sure you have equity in the house the day you buy it or you have the ability to create equity in that house. Like a slot deal, we create the equity. So when you buy the house, by the time the sun falls that day, you should have equity or a plan to create equity. Otherwise, don't buy the house. So that's the seven ways that I buy my houses. And it works for me like magic. Now let's talk about how it could work for you. Okay, so you now know the seven ways that I actually purchase the properties and sell them for that fact, because uh, you can sell them just the way you're buying them as well. Uh, so what I'd like to talk to you about now is, is that I don't think that you're going to become a real estate investor just understanding the seven ways. You should know how each deal works and the intricacies and the math of how each deal works. So here's what I did is I put together 10 videos that is about a total of about two and a half hours worth of content that explains each deal. So I take the slot deal and I break it down on how you're going to buy it. I do all the math and I show you how it works. Then I show you how you're going to sell it and the profit you're going to make in between and how the deal actually works. Then I do that for an option deal. I break it down, show you how you're going to buy it, do all the math, do everything that's involved so you can give an offer and then how you're going to sell it and what your profit is. And I do that for all seven deals. I promise you whether you're a veteran or whether you're a novice investor, I am going to blow your hair back like you're on a Harley Davidson doing 200 miles an hour without a helmet. I promise you. It's going to be something you've never seen before. I know that I've never seen it, and I've been in the real estate investing business for 15 years. And the stuff that I teach, I've not seen other people teach it. So it's very unique to me, but I've done a great job of breaking it down and actually showing you how to do each deal with a structure. So uh, it's very important that if you want to carry on and make money with your real estate investing career, that you watch these videos and understand how each deal works. So you, at the end of the videos, can actually go out and make offers using the numbers and the strategies I'm talking about and actually get some houses bought. So go ahead, click on the button, and let's get started so you can actually get some income in your wallet.